Good morning, everybody. Or afternoon, I guess I should say. It's wonderful to be here again. For those listening uh, through the web or through our DVDs, uh, we're uh, in Madisonville, Kentucky today. And uh, this is where we're going to meet. So if you're in the Madisonville area, Henderson, and the surrounding areas, we'd love to have you come visit us, whether you have a Church of God background or whether you don't. would like to come and learn or just to visit with us. Please get a hold of us. You can log on to our website at OwensboroChurchOfGod.com. And the reason it's called Owensboro is we used to meet in Owensboro and we moved here. So please log on. There's a contact box. Uh, sorry, we don't give our phone numbers out on the on the web for obvious reasons. But we'll be glad to give you a call if you'd like us like us to. Just contact us through the uh, email, and we can either email you back our service times and location or. Or we'd be glad to give you a call if you'd like to talk. It's me, Chris Anderson, and our minister's Mike Partridge. We'd love to have you visit us. Now, to get with the sermon today, this is titled, God's Protection for His People. But we're going to start out with something that's a little different because we live in troublesome times. Uh, people today in this country and, and all the modern descendants of Israel are so very proud of their sin. Um, Isaiah 3 9, a lot of us know it so well. And uh, the scripture will be out of the English Standard Version unless I know it otherwise, because I do have a different one later. Isaiah 3 9 says, For the look on their faces bears witness against them, and they proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. And there's a lot of national sins today. Number one in my mind, and it may be different in others, but in mine is this abortion. That's the number one in mine. How can you kill a little baby? Homosexuality, lying, bearing false witness, bearing false witness. Is that in the news right now? My goodness. Our nation's divided, and it's all divided on lies. There's murder, there's hate, there's racism, and it's a shame that we have a media that promotes this racism. Where I work, everybody gets along so good. But yet when you turn the news on, they're trying to poke a fire in between the races. And, and that's pathetic. And shame on this media and these politicians for doing that. Because people will get along naturally if you just let them. If you just let them. People are high-minded. And the list could go on and on. But today's sermon, like I said, it isn't about digging into all of this. This is just setting a stage, but I will say America, Britain, Canada, Australia, and the world repent of these sins because there's coming a day that they will be answered for. And it's not going to be a good day. Today's message is for God's church. Those who have been called out and accepted the calling and accepted the responsibility during this age Brethren, I just told you a little bit, but we know this world is a mess. And we can't be a part of it. We have to be separate of it. Um, we cannot be like they are. We can't have those traits like the world has and like so many want you to have so they can achieve power. No, we have to focus now more than ever on our Creator. We now have to pray every day for the King of Kings to return and restore order to this earth and end the age of Satan and enter the kingdom of God. Today is the day to pray that He will come and set everything right. Because as sin increases, so will the consequences. And God has warned us that there is a dreadful day approaching where mankind will answer for their sin against the Almighty. Ezekiel 18.30 says, Ezekiel 18.30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. And I want to stop there. We have put out different sermons, and the church produces a book called America and uh, Europe and Prophecy. You can get that at intercontinentalcog.org or garnertedarmstrong.org. You can order that booklet free of charge to tell you who Israel is. So when you hear this, don't close your ears saying, well, he's just talking to uh, that little sliver of a nation. That's not who we're talking to. It's part of it, but it's not the whole message. 
Every one according to his ways declares the eternal God. Repent and turn from your trans transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away you all your transgressions that you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the eternal God. So turn and live. What does this mean for us, church? It means we better make sure we're in the right frame of mind. That we are focusing on God's kingdom and not the ways of the world. Are we seeking the king of kings or the next elected king to save us? Are we seeking the king of kings and what our rewards will be when he gets here or our current rewards we can get our hands on and we're letting that be our focus? I'm asking these not just to ask you in the audience, me, myself, as I look in the mirror. All of us have to repent. I have to repent often. But that's why God called us and give us His Spirit is to convict us when we do fail. And we have a high priest that knows exactly what we're going through and will forgive us of our sins. We have to stay strong in the faith because brethren, God has called us to His truth. He has showed us and opened the book of the prophecies of this Bible where we can understand we're living in very troublesome times. Punishment is coming on this sinful world. But God has promises for, for you, for me, for all of His called out people who are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Matthew 24, 13, just one verse, we know it well, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And we have to claim promises like this. These next verses, Mike has read to this congregation multiple, multiple times. And I will say though, every time they're worth repeating. Turn to Psalm 91. And we're going to read this out of the easy to read version. I want this to come out as basic English as we can bring it. Psalm 91.1 You can go to the Most High God and hide. You can go to God all powerful for protection. I say to the eternal, you are my place of safety, my fortress, my God. I trust in you. God will save you from hidden dangers and from deadly diseases. You can go to him for protection. He will cover you like a bird spreading its wings over its babies. You can trust in him to surround and protect you like a shield. You will have nothing to fear at night and no need to be afraid of enemy arrows during the day. You will have no fear of diseases that come in the dark or terrible suffering that comes at noon. A thousand people may fall dead at your right side or ten thousand right beside you, but nothing bad will happen to you. All you will have to do is watch and you will see that the wicked are punished. You trust in the eternal for protection. You have made God most high your place of safety. So nothing bad will happen to you. No diseases will come near your home. He will command His angels to protect you wherever you go. Their hands will catch you so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. You will have the power to trample on lions and poisonous snakes. The Lord says, if anyone, someone trusts me, I will save them. I will protect my followers who call for me to call to me for help. When my followers call me, I will answer them, and I will be with them when they are in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will give my followers a long life and show them my power to save. I can't explain it any better than what was just read. Brethren, that's a promise of Almighty God. When this day approaches, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're not playing church, we're living church, that's a promise to each of us. He has the power to protect us no matter where we are or what the circumstance may be. God can and will protect His people. The Bible is full of examples of God protecting people when they was in a time of trouble. But I want to focus on Elisha today. 
And why did I choose Elisha? Because Elisha was persecuted. A king wanted Elisha dead because he was a prophet of God. But before we go there, I want to go to Mark 13 real quick just to set a stage here. The other reason I chose Elisha in this set of circumstances, Mark 13 and verse 11, this is Mark's version of the Olivet Prophecy. And it said, When they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand. So in other words, if they're bringing you to trial, there's persecution. Do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but, I, but say whatever is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deli deliver brother over to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. I want to do that and set this stage because Elisha went through this too. And we're going to go through it if we're living during this time. But once again... God's going to be there. So turn to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, beginning at verse 11. 2 Kings 6, 11. And the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled because of this thing. Uh, to set the stage, Israel was at war. And every move this enemy's army made, Elisha would go to the king of Israel and tell him exactly where this army was going to be and every, so every time the army went there, no one was there. God was a protecting His people. And He was doing it through Elisha. Well, the king of the enemy realized he said in a, the latter part of verse 11, Will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel? He thought he had a spy in his ranks. His servant said, None, my lord, but O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, that I may see, send and seize him. And it was told to him, Behold, he is in Dothan. So he sent their horses and chariots and a great army and came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And Elisha said, Do not be afraid, <clears throat> for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Eternal, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Eternal opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha was surrounded. The city was to be sieged. But Elisha wasn't concerned because he saw the mighty power of Almighty God. Why was he able to see it? Because he had that strong of faith and that strong of trust in the Almighty Creator God. And once Elisha asked God to open the eyes of his, his disciple or his servant, and he saw, imagine his thoughts when God opened his eyes and he looked around and saw this massive army of angelic beings ready at any time to take out this enemy of Israel. Just as God protected Elisha, He will protect His people when the time comes. We read in Psalm 91 where God promises protection. So that was in the Old Testament. Let's go to the New. Is there anything in the New Testament in Revelation, the very end, that says God will protect His people? Revelation 12, beginning at verse 1. Revelation 12, 1. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven, seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. 
And her child was caught up to God and to His throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God in which she was nourished for 1260 days. In Bible prophecy, we know a woman represents a church. It either represents the true church or the false church. Satan the devil is represented by the dragon and the stars represent the minions he took with him. The church is protected from the wrath of Satan. We read it. And notice it's exactly three and one half years, which is the time in which God, uh, Jesus Christ told us there will never be a time of trouble like that. So it's no coincidence that God's church was put in the exact same time frame with this and told we will be protected. Now there will be martyrs those martyrs will have faith like we've never saw. For any of us who don't have that kind of faith that we trust in God and we love God and we do what He asks us to do, He will put His wings around us and protect us from any arrow that Satan can throw. Not because of what we are, but because of His love for His creation and His people who are doing their best during this age to follow His commandments and keep His statutes. We have to stay faithful, church. We have to stay faithful. Time's drawn, drawn near. We have to stay focused on the kingdom, not of the things of this world. Because everything in the world is beautiful. It's attracting. It'll try to make you come and, and give everything else up to follow it. Sin promises pleasure, but sin delivers death. God promises salvation and eternal life. So which will we choose today? That's the question. And now our minister, Mr. Mike Partridge. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. Wonderful message. Thank you so much. Have you ever looked into the mirror? Uh, I've been doing that a lot lately, and I thought, boy, where are the years going? Um, as your age increases, uh, you wonder, uh, you start to ask yourself, what have I left behind? What have I left behind? Um, you look into the mirror and say, am I the same human being? Hopefully we're not. Hopefully we're leaving something behind, and the main thing we should leave behind is our service Excuse me, our service to Almighty God. What kind of example am I setting for the world? Is my light shining? Do I glorify God in Christ in everyday life? In everyday life. Have I let God's Spirit direct my thoughts? And that's hard sometimes, isn't it? In the world that we live in. Because we are challenged every day somehow. Somehow. Is the curve of my graph of my life, is it going up or is it going down? Something to think about, isn't it? How am I doing? self analyzation It's a good thought process to have every now and then. It increases our study. Our study of this Bible, God's inspired word. It should do that. It strengthens us with faith and direction. And direction. Have I used my past experiences to grow and to overcome? Have I done that? To see what is important in life itself. Look into the mirror. Today, it's nothing more than materialism, isn't it? Seek, get more, get more, get more, isn't it? That's what this world is based on. You're right, Chris, there's so much hatred in this world. There's not any love at all for mankind, for each other. Because we know whose world this is. It belongs to Satan himself. Satan himself. Have I grown in grace and knowledge with what God has given me, this great truth? Or am I just stagnant and the curve is leveled out and not going up? Brother, it should go up. But it takes work, it takes dedication, study, and prayer quiet times with the Almighty. You must do that. As our age increases, our physical body breaks down. I guess that's what I'm 
my thought process this week. It's been on that. 68 years old. Boy, it's flown by really, really fast. Really fast. Christopher is, is the youngest one in here, I believe. April's the youngest one in here. <laughs> April's the youngest. Our thoughts are really important. Our thoughts about God himself are really important. Material wealth, it does not last. But what, we, what we're doing now, our service to the God of Abraham, is what really counts. The true God of this book. And if you are seeking and asking questions, you can find him also. You really can. Seek and you'll find. And he'll open that door for you. A great door of knowledge. Great door of what's going to happen. And boy, brother, it gives you such peace. It gives you such peace to look forward to in the future. Material wealth does not last. But a servant of God does last forever. Forever and forever. And you will gain a thousand years on the rest of mankind being his first fruits. One thousand years. Annie and I visited a grave of her parents this past week. And she had a brother. And on his grave gravestone said, Professor, Professor, highly educated, teacher, what would you like on yours? How about a servant of the God of Abraham? A true servant. Professor is for here and now, but what about a servant of the true God of this Bible? There's no comparison, is there, brother? No comparison at all. Philippians, let's go there. Philippians. Philippians 3, Philippians 3, verse 7, this is about gains and losses, and what really matters, Philippians 3, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, that's true, isn't it, absolutely, this material wealth, this material world, Doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, he says. Count them but dung. That's pretty low, isn't it? That I may win Christ. So see what Paul says is important? Jesus Christ above all. The true Jesus Christ, who kept the Sabbath day and the holy days. The true Jesus Christ. Let's read on. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. We believe in what we're doing. Each one of us recognizes that something has happened in our life beyond our control. And it can happen in your life if you hear my voice. It can happen in your life. It's never too late to repent and go under the waters of baptism and seek the true God. Because he here is here, and he can be found. He can be found. Let's read on. That I may know him and the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of the dead. Then let's read on. Let's pick it up in 14 now. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. That should be our goal every day, to press for that. And God will fill in the blanks. He'll help us with everything. Doesn't matter. Jobs, problems. He'll increase our faith through prayer and study. He'll manifest himself more to us each day if we seek. We seek him and be devoted, dedicated. 15. Let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you and to me. To me. And then Paul says in 17, Be you followers together of me, brethren. Mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. And we're supposed to be an example to each other. We really are. 
What's important? To win Christ. To win Christ. We have been called as God's first fruits. And you can read, read that in Revelation 20. Let's go ahead and turn there, okay? Revelation 20, verse 6. We have been called as God's first fruits to one day be kings and priests. And in there, you can read about the resurrections. I'll pick it up in 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrections. On such the second death has no power. Ever heard that before? You are now. You are now. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Then there'll be another resurrection to come at the end of that time. But brother, you can be part of the first resurrection if you follow the true God and become dedicated. Your name will be written in the book of life. Nothing any better, nothing any more important. If we go to sleep, he or she, me or you, and we were a servant of the Almighty, we'll hear that trumpet. We will hear that trumpet blast, and up will come to the resurrection of eternal life. It's all in the book. Don't take my word for it or Chris's. Read and study. It's all right here, brother. It's all right here. And once God calls you and you're seeking that, you increase your knowledge. Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 7. It's a red letter reading right here in the beginning. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Ever ask yourself, are the churches of this world doing any good? I'll let you answer that. Are they doing any good? What kind of shape is the world in? Do we love one another? What are they accomplishing? Verse 12. Chapter 22, Revelation, verse 12. I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works what they shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they which do his commandments, that they may have what? The tree of life. There are commandments to be kept. The right commandments. The right day to worship. God's holy days. They're in this book. They are all rich in meaning and prophecy. Let us always desire, let us always seek to grow in God's Holy Spirit, to, on, to be honest and faithful servants, and one day share the peace and happiness that we've been given with other individuals, and teach them so. Teach them so. What does this world have to offer? What does this world have to offer? The Bible is so full of great knowledge and answering of questions. James 3, let's go there. James 3. James 3, verse 14. James 3, verse 14. If you have bitter, bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly. Is that what we are surrounded by today? Absolutely we are. Envy and strife. And it's not so much, I'm like Chris, the people we are around, we get along great, but it's the government and the media that stirs up problems among the masses. And who's behind it? The demons and Satan himself. Let's read on. Where envy and strife are, there is confusion and every evil work. And what do we have today? Every evil work, don't we? We must combat this. We are here to help, here to answer questions, and help you get through this world and receive eternal life. Not by our power. We have no power. We're just men speaking to you. It's God and Jesus Christ that have the power. The wisdom that is from above is pure. 
It's peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. We worship on the, Sab the Sabbath day, the seventh day, a great day of peace, a great day of harmony with our brother here, everyone here. Can't wait to be with everybody because it is so different to shut out the world because you really shut out the world. When I was a little boy, you heard me say this many times and tell the story. 45 minutes and you were gone. It meant absolutely nothing. And you hit the golf course and done whatever you wanted to do. The wisdom that is from above is pure, peaceable, it's gentle, easy to be entreated. It's full of mercy, forgiveness. Get on your knees and ask for forgiveness. You can. Good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Oh boy, do we have hypocrisy today, don't we? We sure do. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. God's truth within us, we look beyond this physical. We hang on to the spiritual. We know what lies ahead. God has shown us what lies ahead, the spiritual. Hebrews 10, let's go there, back a few pages. Hebrews 10, verse 22. Name written in the book of life. Nothing any better is a brother. Nothing any better. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You can't do it alone. You must have God's Holy Spirit through the power of baptism and the laying on of hands to overcome this world. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. And let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works. That's what we try to do here. And never to be self-righteous. When self-righteousness enters in because of this knowledge, you will fail. I will fail. If I don't put God's people first, or God first in Jesus Christ and his flocks, I will fail. Do not forsake Forsake the assembling of ourselves together at the manner of some are, manner of some is. But you exhort at one another as you see what? That day approaching. I've read this many times. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 1. It tells us, let us lay aside every weight nothing else matters brother we have to work we have to eat we all know that we have to work but boy this is what matters right here service to God keeping this day keeping his holy days developing good fruits and loving your brother loving your brother let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'll just take this moment. We have a little one in the back that's made us so happy. And he is just a precious little child. I mean, couldn't love anybody any more than that little fella right there. I mean, he's the greatest. He really brings a smile, April, to all of us. He really does. He is so happy. What a, what a great little gift. Jesus Christ came to this earth as our atonement for our sins. His life was given for us. As we go under the refreshing waters of baptism, we should remember what he done for us and how he died. How he died for us. For 6,000 years, mankind has fought and killed each other on this earth. I ask you a question, how have they done? Not very good, have they? They have not done very good. In 3,000 years of recorded history, and I've made this comment before, we've had like 264 years of peace, and you have to question that. I've read that in several magazines, but I'd have to question that even, whether we've had that, because you could find a war no matter somewhere in the world, no matter where you would go. What's really important, when the government of Almighty God comes to this earth, the power of Jesus Christ, and man's rule will be over, 
man's rule will be over. A time when the true Sabbath day will be kept to honor and to glorify the true God of this book, the seventh day Sabbath, a time of real peace. The millennial reign of Christ will begin. A time when there'll be no disease or war or hatred. Man's rule is over. It's over. Jesus Christ doesn't come back. Mankind will destroy himself. He will. Now the big talk is energy weapons. Not only nuclear weapons, but energy weapons. Anti-gravity machines. They go on and on. On and on to destroy mankind. Matthew 5. Let's do some readings out of there. What's important? Matthew 5. Your name written in the book of life. But being in the first resurrection to gain a thousand years. Matthew 5, verse 15. Matthew 5. Not to do men light a candle. 14, let's pick it up earlier than that. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. They put it on a candlestick and give light, light unto many. That's, what, that's what's very important. With humility, sometimes we can bring happiness to people and understanding. But do it with a humble heart. 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy. I come not to destroy. I remember one time I was doing a funeral with, with Sonny. And we were up in a little town mm, way up by Hallsville. There was probably 150, 200 people there. And Sonny read this. And a lot of jaws dropped open. And when you looked at them, they thought... I saw the look of uh oh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill, to give me to it, meaning. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Jesus Christ kept the Sabbath day and the holy days. So did his apostles, brother. So did his apostles. Don't, don't believe me. Read your Bible. Ask God for help. The help of Jesus Christ to understand. Then you will find true peace. True peace. Matthew 5, verse 44. 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. That's a hard one, isn't it? That is a hard one. Keeping the Sabbath day and the holy days, once you have it, uh, boy, it, seems, it becomes routine. When that sun goes down on Friday evening, you know it's time to shut it off. It's time to shut it off and get prepared because this is a day of uh, great you know, sanctification. It belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Boy, as human beings, boy, sometimes you, it's hard to turn the other cheek, isn't it? But that's part of our growth. That's part of that learning curve that we want to go up. We want to go up. Matthew 6, let's go over there. Matthew 6, verse 14. Matthew 6, verse 14. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It's another one to really, really work on. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, this material stuff, where moth and rust does corrupt. We've seen a lot of billboards around Evansville where people are hugging their cars. It's okay to have good transportation, but they're hug hugging them like a little baby. You know what I mean? And laying on the hoods. It looks very silly. Very silly. It's just a mode of transportation, brother. Just a mode of, to get one place to another. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where three thieves do not break through nor steal. 
For where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Your heart is what God looks through. He looks to that to see where it stands with Him. Is it all material wealth and gain? Or is it in service to Him? That really is important. Really is important. Matthew 6, let's read on a little bit. Matthew 6, verse, 20, uh, verse 33. Seek you first the kingdom of Almighty God. How do you do that? Following His laws and commandments of what He wants you to keep. The true laws and commandments. Seek you first the kingdom of the Almighty and His righteousness. And while you're here, you develop these righteous characteristics, the fruits of the Spirit. And all things shall be what to say? added unto you. That's right, Chris, even protection in the end times. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. Matthew 7. Let's go over there for a reading. Matthew 7, verse 12. Let's read on. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever would that men should have you do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Then it tells us in 13, Enter ye the straight gates, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads into life. But God will help you find that narrow path if you ask Him, if you're seeking. If you realize something in your life is not fulfilled or you have questions. He will help you find that little narrow path. Few be there that find it. Few be there that find it. Then he tells us, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. How do you recognize them? You shall know them by their fruits, is what it says. You shall know them by their fruits. Very important. How do they stand? Are they conforming their thoughts to the Word of God and from this Bible? You will know them by their fruits. Finally, what's important? To be there for our family members when they are resurrected. To help our fellow countrymen as they are raised up. And you can read that in Ezekiel 37, the Valley of the Dry Bones, when there'll be a final resurrection to everyone that has not heard been taught or not listened to, to God's truth. The bones will come together, flesh will come upon them, breath will enter in, and they will stand on their feet. They will need our help to help them understand. We'll have to comfort them and teach them about the true God, about the true Almighty. We will help put lives back together and be servants of the Most High. And they will, they will also, because that's what we are called to do. Isaiah 45, let's go there. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, verse 12. Isaiah 45, verse 12. I love this reading. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded. 22 then, let's read that. It says, look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none, none else. There is none other like him like the God, the true God of this book. How do you think he feels then now that he created man? How do you think he feels? There was a time when he said, oh, he was sorry that he ever created man. He was sorry that he'd done that. How are we doing now? How's mankind doing now? Not very good, are they? Not very good. I pray God that you'll send us more individuals that want to know your truth. And only you can do it. You can influence their minds and put that little seed in there to question and have them, have them to want to know some answers. We will do our best to feed them with the right attitude. Right attitude. 
Anyone that hears my voice, it's never too late to repent, to be baptized, and receive God's Holy Spirit. If you want to be in the first resurrection and gain a thousand years, you must be obedient to God's laws. Keep His commandments. Keep His holy days. Genesis 2. Genesis 2, verse 1. Okay. I've read this a lot, but it's very important because it's not a Jewish, a Jewish day. Not anything mentioned about being Jewish. This God was sanct this day was sanctified in the beginning. Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. It says here he blessed it and he sanctified it. That means it's special, not to be broken. The seventh day Sabbath. He rested from all his work which God had created and which he had made. Very simple, isn't it, brother? Very simple. Doesn't say a Jewish Sabbath. This was in the beginning of creation. By keeping this day, you are honoring the true God, the true God, and he will manifest himself to you, come to you, and he will love you and always be with you and never forsake you and give you a great peace, a great peace. Leviticus 23, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Verse 1, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, speaking to the children of Israel, and say to him, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which shall proclaim to be holy convocations. What's it say? These are my feast. Not Jewish feast, these are my feast. The feast of the true God of his book. Six days shall work be done. It opens with that, doesn't it? Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. In all your dwellings. And then in four. These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. The feast of the Lord. And you can read them from the Passover to the Feast of Tabernacles to the last great day. All rich in meaning. All rich in meaning. To be kept, to be kept, brother, and all are they are. They are true happiness. You will come away fulfilled if you do. The real God, with His truth locked inside our minds, gives you peace, hope, a future government with no wars, disease, hatred, jealousy, or envy. That's what's coming. This is a different truth than that's than, than being taught right now. It's different, isn't it? It's very different. The fruits of darkness rule this world, but you can come out of them. You can come out of them. There is truth beyond the grave. Please, brother, and seek it and you will find it. Ask God to show you the right gate to walk through. Ask Him to show you. And He will. God bless you all until we meet again.